Alright, back again, Luke here, and today what I want to do is show you how to get some more life out of those old electronics that you may have sitting in your closet or no longer working, uh, things that you may be ready to throw out. Uh, before you throw them out, if you're into any sort of gaming repair, game system, handheld repair, or any kind of arcade board repair, I recommend uh, opening these things up and trying to take out the components that you could possibly use, and then uh, getting rid of them after that. As you can see here, this is a MOGA Junior, and I bought this thing for a really cheap price. Some of you may be never even heard of this machine. Uh, I know I hadn't until I picked it up. But uh, it was working fine for about the first three months and then it stopped reading discs and then after that uh, the remote stopped working and then the power went out on it. And uh, I knew that I could probably use some of the components on the inside here so I decided to put it on a shelf and it's been sitting there ever since. And today I had a couple of different gaming machines and some arcade boards that I need some parts for. And it's a little bit of a haul to try and get out to uh, Akihabara in Japan here to try and get some parts. So I decided that I was going to take this thing apart and see what I could use from it. And there are a lot of great useful parts on here that I was pretty surprised with. Um, and especially ones that uh, I can use uh, right away. Now, uh, if you take a look at this board here, this is the main circuit board from the inside. And you'll notice right off the bat there are a lot of different capacitors on here. And if you do any kind of arcade repair, or if you do any sort of electronics repair, uh, handheld game repair, you'll know that capacitors are a really important part. Uh, in fact, a lot of these capacitors uh, in those kinds of machines or different arcade boards, they fail all the time. But one nice thing about these old uh, DVD players, VCRs, uh, home stereo surround systems, things like that, is that you can find a lot of the parts that you may be able to use uh, very easily and cheap. Um, it costs you nothing. Uh, the only part that you probably have to pay for is a soldering pen, unless you have one already, but other than that, you'll be on your way to uh, replacing your stuff in no time flat. Uh, some things to take in mind here to consider are uh, about capacitors is that if you take a look at the tops here, you'll notice that all these tops are flat, uh, there's no leaky fluid, and uh, they look pretty new. That's a key point when you go to replace capacitors or if you take capacitors off. And you want to make sure that there's no leaky fluid or there's no bulging top, no bulging bottom, no corrosion around the bottom, and no leaky fluid. If they all look good, then you should be all set. Now, with these capacitors here, these are really, really short, so uh, I have to use a soldering pen to desolder them, but for some components, uh, if the legs are long enough, you can just use a pair of side cutters, and you can cut off the uh, the legs, and you'll be able to use them uh, much, probably much quicker than uh, using a soldering pen or using some sort of uh, desoldering wick. But um, the great thing about capacitors, as you can see here, uh, I've removed a few of these. This capacitor here, this is a 16-volt, uh, 470 microfarad capacitor. Now, on some of the regular handheld machines, if you have a Game Gear that has uh, bad video or has no sound to it, or you have a... Um, uh, PC Engine GT or a Turbo Express, the handheld TurboGrafx-16 machines, you'll know that these capacitors uh, go out on them all the time, or they have gone out, or failed, or leaked, or something. And uh, you can use these as uh, replacements. The key things to remember about these capacitors is, for one, uh, when you replace a capacitor, make sure that you have the negative side on the negative and the positive on the positive. Uh, these are nicely marked, and you can tell which side is negative, which side is positive. Also, the things to remember here are the voltage and the microfarads. Now, although the voltage is important, the microfarads are more important. And what I mean by that is... Um, for example, if you have a capacitor on a Game Gear, and the capacitor is 100 volts, 50 microfarads, if you replace that with a uh, 200 volt, 50 microfarad capacitor, you'll be okay. You have to have at least the same amount of voltage, and you have to have the exact amount of microfarads. Uh, if you have uh, anything less as far as microfarads, or you have something different from microfarads, you'll wind up having distortion or having some problems with your machine. Uh, sometimes the capacitor itself will fail. Uh, and if you have less than the voltage required, then you'll wind up having uh, an exploding capacitor, or you'll have another component fail. So the key points here are to make sure that you have at least or more uh, voltage than what the, uh, the original capacitor was, and exactly the same amount of microfarads for those, and uh, you can replace them. Uh, just don't have any less for uh, voltage than what the original one was, and don't have anything different at all for the microfarads, and you should be all set. 
Uh, aside from capacitors, you can find a lot more uh, useful uh, different kinds of components on here. If you look, this is the power board here from that uh, DVD player. And you'll see there's a lot of different components on here. We have capacitors, we have ceramic capacitors, we have um, resistors, there's some diodes on here, there's a integrated circuit ICs, uh, there's a heat sink, all sorts of different great stuff that you can use for different um, repairs. Now, what's nice about capacitors is they're really easy to read. Um, they have all of the information basically written on them. But other things here, for example, like these resistors, these are a little bit more challenging to read. Uh, if you'll notice, they have different band colors on them and uh, different colors in general. And uh, these are, are quite tricky to find out exactly how many thousands, uh, for example, like a 100K or a 50K resistor. Um, but what's nice is if you get on the, uh, the internet and you check online, you can find out the ratings for these the different multipliers for the bands and uh, what resistance they have. And you can wind up putting all of the ones that have like 100K in one bag and 50K in another bag, and then you can use those when you need them. Sometimes, in some cases, uh, this one here, doesn't have it but on some circuit boards it'll have the uh, resistance on it I'll say like 100k or 50k things like that but uh, these are still useful components and uh, if you have a soldering pen uh, some people may use uh, some tweezers or maybe a, a pair of very fine needle nose pliers to pull these out because they're very hot when you start desoldering them but still very useful components uh, some diodes here and if you notice the uh, the bottom here on the circuit board, this has an arrow and a line. Uh, diodes are basically like a valve, and they allow current to flow one direction, but the current uh, can't flow backwards. Now with diodes here, they'll have a cathode and anode side, and uh, they'll have a, either a, a gray or white stripe or black stripe or something to indicate the direction that uh, the cath the uh, the diode is supposed to go. If you wind up reversing these diodes here and you put them on backwards you might have some big problems especially if the uh, current goes backwards and uh, winds up uh maybe popping or burning out something else so make sure that you know the exact rating for these these can be quite tricky as well but online you can still find the uh, different ratings for these as well but uh, lots of different components here and the main reason why I want to make this video here is because I know that for myself getting out and trying to find different parts especially going all the way out to Akihabara here in Japan can be quite a bit of a trek and especially if it's raining or if it's really crowded uh, it can take quite some time to get out there and uh, if you have these things laying around at home you can just pull these off and uh, use them right away and I know that for some people you may live next to a hardware store or there may be some radio shacks nearby but for some people maybe living in the countryside area or some people who don't have a car or maybe don't don't have an electronic shop really close nearby this is a really cheap uh, alternative to try and get the parts that you may need uh, especially if you're in a project and you need a quick fix and uh, you, you don't really know what to to do or where to get parts from uh, you can usually scalp them for some of these old electronics you may have laying around your house but just want to give you a little bit of uh, some information here on how to get some uh, useful components from different old uh, uh, broke down or maybe no longer in use uh, electronics and be on your way to fixing up some of those game machines that you love to play and be on your way to gaming again or you know any kind of electronics that you're you're trying to repair uh, get them up and going again but that's about all for me for right now like always I'll put up another video here soon so thanks for watching